Blue Fire is arguably the most important roller coaster for mock rides. Located at Europa Park, this launch coaster alerted the industry that Mach was capable and willing to build major thrill coasters. This ride would not only be cloned several times, but it was also the gateway to Mach constructing larger and even wilder coasters down the road. Not only is Blue Fire a significant ride for Mach, but it's one of the premier rides at Europa Park, and find out why in this review. Mach has been building roller coasters ever since the late 1950s. Through 2010, the company was most well known for powered coasters and their wild mice coasters. Mach didn't offer a true thrill coaster at this point though. Arguably their most intense model was a water coaster, which isn't exactly the wildest ride in the world. Europa Park was one of the largest amusement parks in Europe. This German park is owned by the Mach family, and as a result, eight of their first nine roller coasters were built by Mach themselves. The one coaster that wasn't from Mach was Silver Star, a B&M hyper coaster that opened as Europe's tallest and fastest roller coaster. In 2009, the park unveiled Blue Fire. This was not only Mach's largest roller coaster to date, but was also the company's first launch coaster. Blue Fire features a linear Synchrotus Moner, or LSM launch. While Mach launches have received a lot of flack from coaster enthusiasts for their lack of power, they are a fast and reliable way to get trains up to speed. This ride system has now been used 16 times worldwide. The Blue Fire layout has been cloned several times, and it's not hard to see why. The layout is very diverse between that launch, the four inversions, and airtime hills. The layout has been used 10 times, although one of the instances was Steel Taipan at Dreamworld, which converted the original launch into a swing launch. Mach also debuted a new ride vehicle and restraint system for Blue Fire. These trains are incredibly comfortable between the seat contouring and the overhead lap bar. The seats are also elevated which grants riders a greater sense of freedom during the ride. It's one of the best trains and restraint systems for any roller coaster out there. This seat and restraint combo has been used on any of their new thrill coasters, including their extreme spinning coasters and hyper coaster models. Beyond the technical merits of Blue Fire, the ride is very well themed. It immediately became the anchor attraction in a new Iceland area. The bright blue track looks amazing against the sky, and the course has some rock work as well. The ride is sponsored by an energy company, and the ride is themed to harvesting natural gas. It's a bit of a corporate theme, but I do not mind because the ride looks good, and it features a relevant dark ride scene that I'll talk about later. Blue Fire routinely is one of the longest lines at Europa Park. It's often posted at 40 to 50 minutes on summer days, but I often wait 10 to 15 minutes less than the posted wait. Blue Fire is a capacity machine. The ride runs up to four trains simultaneously, each seating up to 20 riders. This ride has separate load and unload stations, plus fast operations, so the line rarely stops moving. There is a way to skip the line though. For many years, the ride had a single rider line that would usually be just 5 to 10 minutes. But on my 2021 visit, this queue line had been transformed into one for the virtual queue system. Europa Park had a free skip the line pass service on their mobile app. Blue Fire was one of the rides available. You could reserve a 10 minute window for one ride at a time. Spots for Blue Fire were some of the hardest to snag, but I just kept refreshing until I saw one because it was a massive time saver. The standby queue features a separate line at the end for the front. This line is decently long and can add another 15 to 20 minutes to your wait. Alternatively, you can wait for the other 9 rows. You can try requesting one of these rows if you have a specific choice, but the request isn't always honored. As for my favorite seat, I like the front and back evenly on this coaster. The operations in Blue Fire Station are a work of art. Guests put their loose articles in train-specific double-sided bins, so there's no log jam on the unload platform. And you have no seat belts, so the simple lap bars are a breeze to check. These trains have two additional features you don't necessarily get in the other mock launch coasters. The better of the two is onboard audio. The ride soundtrack is very good, although it can be a little hard to hear. The other feature is a pulse reader on the handlebars. This feature doesn't always work, but I don't think it adds much to the experience at all to be honest. Once dispatched, you round a corner and enter the show scene. You're in a gas factory. You have a few animatronic workers, but it's clear something is wrong. Lights flash and sirens blare. Soon after, the doors open and you start accelerating down the launch track. 
Blue Fire accelerates the train from 0 to 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour in 2.5 seconds. Those are respectable acceleration figures. And of the mock launch coasters I've experienced, this one is the most powerful. It has a decent kick to the launch. It still can't match the power of the Intamin or Gerslauer LSM launches, but it is on par with a good Premier Rides launch. The launch ends by shooting through a tunnel and then navigating this massive 125 foot or 38 meter tall overbank. Because you slow down at the apex, you get some lateral hang time. You get more towards the front, but the back compensates with a little whip on the descent. After shooting through another rock tunnel, you'll get some decent G's in the valley. Then you navigate a large vertical loop. You slow down at the top yet again, producing some hang time, and this again is more pronounced towards the front. Next is a snappy right hand turn. Not only do you breeze through this turn, but it also is an awesome head chopper with Wodan. You then twist upwards into the mid-course brake run, getting some positive G's on the way. And if you're up front, you'll also get some floater airtime at the apex. Then Blue Fire proceeds into the second half, which I think is even better than the first half. The drop off the mid-course gives solid floater airtime for those in the back. You then navigate a twisted horseshoe roll, which are two corkscrews broken up by a bank turn. Both inversions offer hang time. You again get more hang time up front, but those in the back get some whip as well to compensate. I also like how this element is surrounded by rock work, so the visuals are really cool. Blue Fire then treats riders to an S-hill that pierces through the vertical loop. This element looks pretty slow off-ride, but it does give a little floater airtime throughout the train. You then round a corner and experience Blue Fire's best element by far, and it's also one of the best inversions in the world. The inline twist is downright wild. It viciously flings the train through it, generating incredible hang time, whip, and lateral simultaneously. It feels like a slower version of the Mosasaurus roll. You then round one final lackluster turn, and then you hop into the brake run, which ends the 3,465 foot or 1,056 meter long coaster. And even after a decade of operation, Blue Fire is still immaculately smooth. This ride is just so re-rideable. So what would I rate Blue Fire? I would give this coaster an 8.5 out of 10. This is a really good ride. It's so well rounded. It has a good launch between the theatrics and the strength. Then the main layout has a mix of mild airtime hills and four great inversions, with that final one being a truly elite moment. The coaster is super re-rideable and just a joy to experience. Blue Fire may not be as intense as other major thrill coasters outside of that final inversion, but the ride is just pure fun and it's easily one of the best rides at Europa Park. And this ride was the gateway to mock fine-tuning their craft and building future thrill coasters. Without this ride, it's unlikely would have some of their newer and more revered coasters. So those are my thoughts on Blue Fire at Europa Park. What are your thoughts on this launch coaster? Do you agree this was an important coaster for Mach? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.